Look at this piston. Seized. Look at this cylinder. Seized. Ha <laughs> ha. So it's kind of ha ha, and it's kind of not. That's Nelson from The Simpsons. First and foremost, thank you very much for watching. Maybe you will get something out of this, and I hope so. My name is Dave. This is your pennant racing channel, but this is also going on best dual sport bikes because higher viewership, and this is important to know. So let me tell you what happened. 23300 XC, fabulous bike. Me and the guy talked a few times, trying to figure out a few things to do. And I said, hey, look, um, he goes, well, I usually ride about 4,000, thinking about doing a higher compression head. I talked to this place in Idaho, and they just keep trying to tell me, you got you to gotta have the head. And I said, I wouldn't go down that ro route yet. The compression's already too high in the things. And he said, I need to do your ECU stuff as well. And I said, you know, we've already gone down. We just talked about that. In another video, the compression's already really high. If you bump it up higher, um, the air will compress, yes, but you're adding extra fuel to it. When we do the ECU stuff, that won't compress. That's running compression. You're pumping up static compression, which also pumps up running compression, but what we're doing with the fuel, uh, you know, really adds to the running compression. The power's higher, the volume metric efficiency is higher, the heat's gonna be higher. All that stuff, all that pressure creates heat. So you're really walking that fine line and whether the thing's gonna even rev out, let alone stick up. Okay, okay, I get it. And uh, he said, well, we're gonna have some good weather. The storm's coming, you know, all this rain and so forth. We're gonna go riding one last time, but it's just gonna be in the mountains. It's cool. And we're just gonna be tooling around. All right, whatever. And uh, next thing you know, phone rings, bike stuck. All right. Why do you think it's stuck? Well, I think everything you were saying was actually correct. Uh, I did. I'd already bought that head. I wanted to try it. We were going to go up in ele elevation. I put it on uh, higher elevation. It was spunkier on the bottom, but you are right. It didn't rev out as much. The problem, I think, came about when the guy said, oh, let's go down these other trails. Well, we dropped down from for quite a, quite a bit in elevation, about 2,000 feet in elevation. And then we were climbing back up and the dirt was rich and the traction was good and we got into these races and I'm going, I'm on it, you know, pretty hard in fourth gear up this hill and ah. So I think you might be right. And I said, well, okay, uh, you know, I don't know what to do. You can't buy parts. I said, yep, you can't buy, buy parts. How does it look? Well, it doesn't look that bad. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm not a fix-it place, but I do, I do build a lot of race stuff. Send me your cylinder, and I just want to see if I can clean it up. I wanted to make a video on the cleaning up of these things, whether you should or shouldn't hone in the first place, and then I will get you a piston. I will fit it. I'm going to sand it. I'm going to have to sand this, this piston. We'll use the Wassner piston. We'll sand it down, make sure the thing is fit at three thousandths which is really good if you're gonna be on it. Uh, that clearance is definitely better. We'll remap your ECU. You can run 40 or 50 to one on the oil. You know, let that be the cushion between that extra cylinder clearance there. That's what I've been using. It really hauls, but no more of those heads. Uh, plus I'm cutting my own domes. I'll get you one of those little lower compression. I think you'll be a real happy guy. Okay, so anyhow, Here's the cylinder. It's not horrible, but you can't just put a new piston and ring in this thing because there's, when you run your finger through it, there isn't uh, big scoring, big grooves. I think the Nicosil side of things are gonna be okay, but that's where the honing comes in. So I'll show you the hone I got, I buy here, and the oil that I use and kind of how I do things. We're not gonna really be taking, you know, the Nicosil off or really opening it up, but, we need to clean it up, see if we can get a real nice cross hatch in it at that point, inspect it, and see if it's worth to put the new piston and rings in it and fit those to size, or if we're missing Nicosil wear, is it gonna get worse? Does it need to go off and get plated? So here's the picture 
the closer pictures of the cylinder and the piston. It's not horrible, it's just a heat thing. It's not down the intake side, it's just straight down the exhaust side, it's just a heat thing. Look at these pictures. And then I'm gonna show you how I do the honing. So this is a simple way to do it. You can just use two pieces of board here, uh, put them over your trash can. I like to run it up and down. I'm gonna hone from the top to the bottom. Two reasons, one, any grit that might get in there wouldn't get stuck up here in the exhaust port, and two, it's easier to start from the top than the bottom where the cylinder sticks out. This is a flex ball hone, 240 grit um, from this place here. Uh, brush, re brush research, and here's the link where I got it on Amazon. I also got the oil there too, and that's 20 bucks. Okay, now I'm gonna hone. I put the oil in a spray bottle, and I get everything there as well as I can. I don't really want the dry aspect of it. I also will get the hone just for fun. Now we're just going to try to make a 45 degree cross hatch. And as you, you're going to try to gauge it to go up and down about as fast as your, this thing is turning, but it's just going to take a few strokes, pull it out, look at it and see how it's, see how it's going. I don't. You want to start it before it goes in. Now let's look. I don't know how well this shows up on this camera. So here's a clearer picture here that I took with the phone. And you can see then that the crosshatch, I didn't go fast enough up and down. This is more like a 30 degree or 60 degree, but it's not a 45, which is kind of what we want. So I'm gonna go at it again. And you can also see that uh, it's not a gnarly hone by any means. It still has a long way to go to even take some of these scratches out. So if you're worried about, you know, taking all the Nicosil out, I wouldn't worry about it. Let me get back at it. Well, it worked out well and I'm happy with it. I just cleaned it with carburetor cleaner and then I washed it with the hot water and Dawn dishwashing liquid and blew it all out with the air and it came out really well. Sometimes if you need to really see what's going on in there, use something like this, magnifying glass with a light in it. If your eyes are a little wacky, you can really get a good idea of what's cruising on, shine some light in there, see well. Take a look at these pictures here. Uh, you can see the, the top, real nice, the rest of it nice. The bottom down here, you still see a few scratches. No big deal, man. You rub your fingernail in there and there's zero catches you just run a pick in there like you can run a pick like this you don't feel any kind of uh you know bumps so you are good to go now dig these pictures so now what am i going to do now i'm going to size this Wastner piston that i use to the cylinder. Of course, I will cut the bottom, get the clearance here so it doesn't touch the crank. But these things really work best at three thousandths clearance. A lot of people could go, oh, that's way too loose. Well, it's a different motor than before and they run hot. And just like this guy, with it already being hot and adding the compression, that's what stuck it. You saw the heat seizure there. Now, I already know that three thousandths really works well. And then after we remap the ECU, you can easily add some more oil to it, um, you know, and then you're using that bigger filter that we've got. And everybody's running those things at 40 to 50 to one and going, man, this thing is really stunning. So let the extra oil be the cushion between the piston and the cylinder, maybe with some slight, slightly extra clearance, but it's a nice free revving thing that you don't have to worry near as much about sticking. So I'll mic it out with these two things here and then I'm just going to sand this with 150 grit sandpaper until I get my desired size.
So the best question is, did it work? Is this it? This actually isn't it, but we'll get to this in a second. Let's look at the dyno. Okay. Oop. This is it. Pretty good for a rebuild. With the Wassner piston, I sanded it and it's three thousandths. I cut the intake side just a little bit more for a little bit more breathing. And this oil is at 40 to 1 instead of 60 to 1. Pretty good. So if this is just a simple rebuild, what was that other one with all that extra little top end? So what was it? An almost free two horsepower all the way on top, no loss on the way up, and two down the backside, almost. Just a simple, different combustion chamber that I've machined to lower the compression. Yeah, compression's way too high in these things. This one took it from 205 to 185. That's the difference here, 185 to 205. Man, they're only $79.95. If you spent more than that, you got ripped. Everything over 100 bucks, you ripped. Raising compression, not the way to go. We'll make the next video on this dude, but check it out. Well, thanks for watching, and if you need help with your stuff, call or email. Have a good day.